It's spring planning season. What a great time of the year it is. Now is the time that a lot of us are planting summer annual plots. We're prepping our soil, getting the seeds in the ground, hoping for rain and those first signs of germination. We do this in hopes our plans for a productive fall destination food source all works out for us. There's nothing like a secluded and attractive food plot to keep your enthusiasm and hopes high during the hunting season. But the food plot needs to mature and be large enough so it's not all consumed before late fall and early winter. I put a few Facebook posts on recently this week about my soybeans that I put in several different destination food plots, everything from about an acre and a half to about two and a half to three acres. And a lot of people ask me, Jake, how do you keep the deer from eating them all? And it's a complex answer, but I'll try and go over it. Right behind me is a good example of one of them, and that is early successional growth of available browse in lots of areas where deer spend their time. I've got a large bedding area over here, and there's lots of feeding that takes place with native vegetation. Oaks, maples, hickories, walnuts, multiflora, rose, you name it. This one right here, this happens to be a hickory, and you can see a lot of the leaves have been picked off right here. And by the way, when I walked out here tonight, I found a shed. So this uh, got popped up when I dissed this up the other day and I didn't see it. Uh, so that's always a win. But uh, besides having early successional growth, along the edges of your food plots, you need to have them in the areas where you have bedding. And anyone who's followed me and watched my videos knows that I go into several locations throughout my timber and perform a pretty serious timber improvement project through notch and fall large trees, hinging the medium and smaller trees to get a lot of the vegetation that's 20, 30 feet up down at a deer's level and also by creating a lot of sunlight in a vast area of three quarters to an acre to encourage all kinds of young native growth. Again, oaks, maples, hickories, basswoods, whatever comes up out of the ground, it's gonna be there. So that, again, is a lot of food where the deer spend their time so that when they do come out and feed, primarily morning and evening during the growth period right now that's so important. I also make sure I have a lot of diverse food sources available. I have alfalfa on the property, clover plots, chicory and clover plots, and again, plenty of cool season annuals. In a couple of months, when we get into the August time frame, I plant and overseed my beans for that. So it is just a very simple strategy, but it's all encompassing. There's quite a few deer on this property, and each year, few more than others and this last winter we had quite a few here so my doe harvests are going to go up this fall but right now I'm doing pretty good I'm about a uh, little over two two and a half weeks into planting this soybean field and it's coming up real good and it's not being over browsed uh, one of the other tips I did want to explain is I didn't drill them in this year I broadcast disc them and dragged them in and I put them down kind of heavy knowing that between the rabbits and the woodchucks and the deer density, I would end up having a lot more survivors by kind of overwhelming the, the food source in the beginning of the uh, germination stage. But I'm planting altogether about five, maybe six acres of uh, soybeans here on the farm, along with probably three to four acres of alfalfa and clover. So that ultimately is about 10 to 11 acres of food and some cool season annuals as well. So one of my strategies that I use, and I think a lot of you guys can use, that are trying to grow warm season crops such as soybeans that you see behind me, is to have a very good, attractive, early season crop growing right alongside of it. And right here I have alfalfa. The deer are in here all the time. I have uh, took some video of a couple of bucks and does in here last night and you can just see the whole bottom of this everything's nipped off it's just amazing how they're pounding this and by having a preferred food source that's a little better than those soybeans right now then it allows my soybeans behind me to grow so it's just another way to try and kind of uh, offer more on the on the buffet 
overwhelm them with more choices and more food so that you can have your soybeans get up and get past that early three to four week stage where the deer can do so much damage to them. Just another thing to add to your arsenal when you're doing a complete management plan to help bring all of your food sources in and not have them be over browsed at the same time. Good luck and good habitat.